Pastor Andrew Alexander, the pastor of Healing Word Church here in San Antonio, or you can say Bandera. Uh, praise the Lord. Today I want to talk about, uh, I want to talk about faith. But before I begin, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and praise. And Father, we magnify your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. We thank you for your blessing on the day. We ask that you touch every soul that listened, Lord, to this message in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would bless them, increase them, Lord. Give them greater faith, greater understanding today. Lord, open up the eyes of their heart in the name of Jesus, Lord, and just let your face shine on them, oh God. Look towards them, oh God. In the midst of their troubles and the thing they're going to, Father, look towards them, Father, and help them. Lord, bless every word that comes out of my mouth, Lord, for uh, these things that I speak, Lord, I believe are from you. And Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, like I said, we're going to talk about faith today. And, uh, you know, the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And uh, But I know a lot of people, like I say, they believe they really have faith in God. And uh, so I'm going to see if you really do. And I, I hope that you would examine yourself from the things that I'm going to say, you know, whether you have this faith or not. OK, like I say, you can go and sit down in a chair and uh, and, and, you know, you believe that chair is going to stand, stay up for you. You know, I have sat in chairs before and man, with all confidence and went through the chair. <laughs> so, I mean, but we have faith, you know, we have faith that we're going to take a next breath. We have faith that we're going to walk. We have faith that we're going to continue to see. Uh, we have faith in our, our jobs, that our jobs is going to continue to pay us. You know, we have faith in all these things, you know. But I want to get down to this thing about having faith in God. You know, in the Bible, if you used to look at Matthew, uh, Matthew 8 and 26, and just a little thing he says, and he said, uh, uh, why is your, where is your faith? He says, oh ye of little faith, right? And he's talking to his disciples and he got up and rebuked the wind that was blowing in the boat, you know, while they was in the boat. And uh, praise God. So where is your faith? You know, where is your faith? I know we say our faith is in God, but a lot of times we illustrate that we don't have faith in God. And here is an example. First of all, I must say, I did, I'm not practicing medicine, okay? I'm not a doctor. Uh, keep taking your medicine because you have to have faith to not take medicine. And basically, you got to have faith to take medicine, you know? Uh, you got to believe that this medicine is going to work. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times when we pray and ask God, say, to heal our bodies, and, uh, and what we do a lot of times is we go, we pray, and then we go to the pill bottle. <laughs> or we go to the pill bottle, and when it don't work, then we come to the Lord. You know, God wants you to have faith in him. You know, he says in his word, he sent his word to heal us and to deliver us from all destruction. You know, and that's in Psalms, you know. And then we know by the stripes on Jesus' back that we are healed, right? By healed. So we have to have faith that God is going to do these things for us. I mean, I'm just using an example of healing, you know. So if you believe God is going to heal you, then if you pray to ask him to heal you, then believe God. Don't care what goes on. You know, more likely you're not going to feel it. You know, you're not going to feel it right away. Uh... You know, and if you got every evidence, oh, I'm still in pain. God did not heal me. Well, that's not necessarily true because God did heal you. When you asked him, he healed you. You may still be in pain. You, you may be still going through for a time, but after a while, it will quit. I mean, I struggle with a lot of uh, uh, pain and physical problems myself, but I have to believe the Lord. I have to believe the Lord is the one that's going to heal me. So... My prayer to the Lord all the time, especially when it gets, things get really, really bad, and I'm praying to the Lord, saying, Lord, I need you to heal me, and I'm commanding healing in my body. 
and uh, and it don't seem like anything's moving. And uh, so I will ask the Lord a couple of questions. You know, I said, well, Lord, is this a case where I need to go to the doctor? And if he says no, he says no, then I know that he's going to heal me. I don't need to pray about it no more. I don't need to worry about it no more because he told me that he was going to heal me. Okay. Now, if he if I'm praying and he said, no, you need to get up, go to the doctor, then I'm going to go to the doctor. See, that's having faith in God. You believe in what God says. The Bible says, or not the Bible, I shouldn't say that. This is a thing that I, I say. At the entrance of God's word, faith begins. Well, the Bible kind of says that too. You know, but that's my rendition of it. So when God speaks, then that's when we have faith. You know, we have faith in God. See, you have faith. Not faith in your faith or faith in somebody else's faith. Or faith in something you heard and you might believe. No, you got to try God and, uh, and learn how to have faith in God. So if God speaks something, then you just trust him. You know? But like I said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without trusting God, you can't please God. And I think the, the biggest thing that we probably are having a, a problem with is... A, People don't know how to hear God, and that's really a whole nother message. They don't know how to hear God. They don't know how to ask God and wait and hear from God, you know? So you don't know, a lot of people don't know what the voice of God is. What is God's voice? What does God sound like? You know, when God speaks to me, and, and I'm not saying that he does it in one particular way, because he can speak to you in many different ways. You know, he can speak to you through the, uh, through the word, you know, he can speak to you through the word. He can speak to you through somebody else. Somebody else may come and speak something to you. But you got to understand, it'll be something that you have already asked or something you are dealing with God with. Okay. So they may come speak to you about something. Uh, it might be sometimes even a television show or something that's just speak to you. You know, so like I'm saying, it's many different ways to hear from the Lord, you know, to hear when the Lord is talking to you, you know, but uh, as you mature in the Lord, you learn to hear him a lot better, a lot better. And I can say to you that God, he speaks quite often. I mean, he'll talk to you. When you speak to him, he'll talk to you back. You know, sometimes you just got to wait, wait a little time. Sometimes he'll talk to you right away, right as soon as you can get it out of your mouth, he's answering you, <laughs> you know. But you got to learn how to hear the Lord. And when you learn how to hear the Lord, then you'll be able to learn how to have faith in God. You know, I tell a lot of people, well, it's kind of trial and error. You know, if you believe in God for something, you say, okay, I believe, believe the Lord told me to do this. And then if it does not turn out, then you know it wasn't the voice of the Lord. You know it wasn't his voice, you know. And that trial and error will teach you how to hear God. But we should, <coughs> what we should do is present. Go to the Lord in prayer and present our situation to the Lord. And when we start doing that in, in every situation that we come up with, then we'll start learning how to have faith in God. And I'm not going to say God is no yes man, okay? He's not going to tell you yes every time. And a lot of times he'll tell you no. He said, no, don't do that, you know? But you got to learn how to hear the voice. you got to know between what's you and what's the Lord. Because many times when we're praying, we really want something from the Lord. We have a desire for something from the Lord. And, 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 we, and we are really pressing to get whatever this desire is. Sometimes God would just tell you, no, no, it's not for you. No, don't go over there. No, don't speak to that person. I mean, he even told me, don't talk to certain people. Don't, no, don't talk to them. You know, because God has his own reasons why. And I trust God in him. So my faith is totally in the Lord. You know, so if you're going to go to work, I mean, going to work all the time. Sometimes maybe you need to pray before you go to work. Lord, shall I Go to work today. I know you say, man, he might, he might say no. He might tell you don't go. Or he might tell you wait. 
you know, Lord, shall I go to work right now? He might tell you, wait 10 minutes. So if he's telling you wait 10 minutes, you know, before you go, it might be something ahead of you that he's trying to get you to uh, not run into or have an accident or, or something like that. So you have to trust the Lord in, in the things. Ask him everything and wait on the answer for him. Like I, said, like I say, sometimes he'll answer fast and sometimes he'll answer, it may take some time. Sometimes it may take time. Before he answers, because maybe there's some place or something you need to get right before he answers. So, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Have faith in God. He wants you to trust him. You know, trust him. Trust his word. What does his word say? You know, what does his word say? You know, his word, if it says don't do something, then don't do it. If you can't find it in the word, then that's when you really need to ask him and seek his face. Lord, what, do you, what, is, what shall I do in this situation? And take the time to spend time with the Lord. Now, his disciples here, <coughs> excuse me, they were walking with him all this time. And he had, you know, and, uh, and, and, and they were uh, going uh, in the boat with Jesus. And the wind started blowing and everything. But they seen Jesus' miracles, you know. Healing the sick, open the eyes of the blind, and all these things. They seen all the miracles that he did, feeding people, all these things, you know. And now when they seen the wind, natural elements, so they starting to doubt the Lord. You know, because now they see a natural element. But they didn't have faith in what Jesus, you know. Jesus one time told them, look, get in the boat, we're going to the other side, you know. And when the waves stuff come up, you know. They didn't hear what he said. He says, we're going to the other side. Sometimes God, he'll tell you to do things, right? He'll say, okay, I want you to go do this. It doesn't mean that it's going to be perfect every time. Understand, situations come up, but God's word, listen to what he says. He says, this is going to happen. Well, there might be things in between that happening. And we have to have faith in God and not turn. Say, well, it's going bad because God, it must not be God's will. Not necessarily, not necessarily, you know. Sometimes the enemy is going to try to stop you from what you, what God wants you to accomplish. So sometimes some difficult things might come up that you have to go through so God can't accomplish it. You see what I'm saying? Because he's, he's testing your faith. He's saying, do you really believe? Do you believe my word? Do you have faith in me? Do you believe that I can accomplish these things that I ask you to do? Do you believe that I'm able to do this? So that's why he says walk by faith and not by sight. You can't walk by what you see. You can't walk by the situation. You can't walk by what somebody says or what somebody else do. You can't walk by these things because if you do, you would never please God. Because you, you're walking, you're walking according to what you believe, you know, not according to uh, what God says, you know. So if you think about it, I mean, it's a difficult thing that Jesus had to go through and the disciples, you know. Jesus had to go through some difficult things, and come against some people. You know, you may think, well, man, Jesus, he could have been like this. You know, he could have said, well, you know what? I got this great message. Everybody's going to receive my message and it's going to be great. Nobody's going to come against me and it, everything's going to be perfect. But it wasn't that way. God gave Jesus a command and told, told Jesus what to do. And Jesus had to stand against all kind of oppositions where people wanted to stone him and kill him and all these things. And he had to stand in the midst of that opposition, you know, to accomplish the task of God. He believed his father. Amen. He believed his father. So will you believe God? You know, in the midst of all you're going to, if he told you something, don't go to the right and to the left. Just simply believe. Don't turn. Hang on. Wait. And you don't have to keep praying about it over and over again. You know, Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again. I'm going to tell you something about the Lord. The first time you pray, he hears you. And he doesn't forget. <laughs> he doesn't forget. He doesn't say, oh, I f oh, I'm sorry. I'm glad you had to remind me. I forgot. No, he, 
he remembers everything. He got the best memory, you know. So if you ask him, all you need to do after you ask him is just praise him. Say, Lord, thank you for whatever it is. Thank you, Lord. Even if it take 10, 15, 20 years, you keep thanking the Lord, I thank you for it. That is having faith. That's not going back and forth, you know, like the wave of the sea, the Bible says in James, you know. It, it, it's, it's having faith, you know, you're steadfast, you're, you're like a tree planted by the rivers of water in Psalms 1, you know, and, and you, you're not moved by things around you, about things that people say, because your faith is in God. He will accomplish the things that he said, Okay? I want you to understand that he will come. Don't it's no matter of time. You know, you sometimes some of you out there may be thinking, man, I'm getting old, you know. Man, I've been waiting such a long time. I'm getting old, and you know, I might as well just give up. Don't give up. Just wait on the Lord. I mean, He's gonna have the perfect time. And that's kind of in the situation I'm in. I've been waiting for something. For now, uh, about five years, and I'm waiting for the Lord to open some doors and, and to do some things for me, you know. But I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep believing the Lord. I know what he called me. I know what he wants me to do. But I have to wait on his timing because God's timing is the best, right? I mean, I can go for it and try to do things without God, but then I'm not having faith in God. I'm having faith in what my abilities and what I can do. But I want to have faith in God. So you have to wait on God. And I, 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 we have to learn patience, you know. If we're going to have faith in God, we just got to, you got to have a little patience, you know. Uh, ask the Lord, well, while I am waiting, what do I do while I am waiting? And he may give you an answer of what you, you, you can do while you're waiting, you know. For whatever it is to come to pass. You know, because I'll tell you, God's timing is not like our timing. You know, he has, we have to fit into his plan. Understand, I know we have our own agenda. And we want things done at a certain time. You know, I got to hurry up and get it done and stuff like that. But you got to understand, God has his own agenda. And we have to fit into his agenda. I see this as a puzzle. You know, I like to do the puzzle not crossword puzzles puzzles you know and so that little puzzle piece has a place in that puzzle right yes right so while we putting together this puzzle we're trying to figure out where this piece go in this puzzle we're looking we keep trying you know trying to figure out but it has a place and that's the same thing that we are we are like pieces of a puzzle in God's plan and God, there's a certain time when that puzzle need to be used, okay? So we have to wait on God to that time for us to be used inside of his plan. Amen. I mean, it is his plan for us to be holy. We're supposed to live holy. We're supposed to be saved. We're supposed to be children of God, you know. But he does have a plan for you. So don't give up on God, you know, and turn away and do something else. Uh, until God is ready to use you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because he has a plan. He has a plan. You know, and, uh, and I know sometimes, uh, praise the Lord, you may have a plan for something and, and it seems to be falling apart, uh, like uh, you need to get something paid. This is a big one. There's a bill that needs to be paid, you know, or these people are going to cut me off or whatever, you know. And uh, God, he said, he is our provider, okay? So what I have learned over time is let it be cut off. Because if I pray and say, Lord, I need X amount of money to take care of this thing, or they're going to cut me off or repossess it or whatever, whatever it is, you know. Hopefully it ain't, hopefully it ain't because you did something bad with your money. You should have did something, you know, be responsible with your money. But, uh, uh, but you have to just wait on God. If, if it got to be turned off, let it be turned off. I'm not, I don't stress over that because I trust God. I don't ask him for those things. You know, I've asked him for money. People request some things of me and I asked him for the money 
to help them, you know. So I can't, you can't do nothing until God provides. So I have to wait on the Lord to bring the provision so I can help that other person. You know, maybe that person should have went to God first and trusted God. But they came to me, maybe, first, and they're looking for that provision, you know. And, and God did not give me the provision to help them. So I, you can't really stress on I trust God, you know, um, and uh, have faith in God, you know, that God will provide if it is his, what, his will, okay, his will. Sometimes we'll go out of our way. Uh, helping people and doing things we should not do and maybe we should have asked the Lord first before we did anything okay because sometimes we can get ourselves in trouble by moving before God so it's a good idea I'm talking about having faith in God is to ask the Lord Lord shall I help this person or not okay and then even if you got the money, if you got the money in your pocket, big wads of money, whatever it is, you got whatever they need, some pots and pans or whatever, you know, we need to go before the Lord first and ask the Lord, Lord, shall I take this and help that person and wait on the answer from the Lord? Because a lot of times we'll just go do things and help that person and it wasn't for them to be helped. Sometimes we get in the way of God by stepping out of our place and, and helping them and not asking the Lord whether we should help them. I want you to understand sometimes the enemy will come to take those things that God has blessed you with. Because if you don't seek the Lord first, you give it away. The enemy can take it from you. So don't, don't feel bad about if God says no you know don't help that person just like if I'm going down the road and you got these people out on the corner with signs right and uh, so I would ask the Lord Lord I mean even right there I see him walking you know up the thing I said Lord shall I help them with something and if the Lord tells me no then I won't do it but if he say yes then I go ahead and give it just like a one evening, uh, I was at a 7-Eleven. Me and my wife, we was waiting uh, for something with my son there. And a man walked up to me, you know, saying, oh, I need this, I need that. And I, you know, and I kind of prayed under my voice. And I said, Lord, well, what shall I do? I only got $20. You know, what should I do? Should I help this person or not? And then the Lord said, go ahead and help him. So I gave him the $20. See, that's having faith in God. I'm not worried about what he's going to do with that money. Maybe he asked the Lord for help and needs some help. I'm not really sure, you know, but I know what the Lord said to me. So I am having faith in God that I give this money to help this person. Right. The Lord gave me the money. So if the Lord say give it, then I'm going to give it. But if the Lord tells me, no, don't give it, then I won't give it. That's having faith in God. That's having faith in God. You got to put the Lord faith first. And everything he wants us to be faithful in everything he wants to he wants to help you in any situation you in he wants to direct you he wants to guide you he wants you to, he wants to do these things for you but you have got to first seek him you got to talk to God first God should I do this God shall I go over to this person's house you know God should I go to this party they invited me to you know God should I go visit my friend Lord, should I go down to the store? I need to get something from the store. Lord, should I go to the store? He may tell you no to avoid accidents, you know. Uh, so it's good to always inquire of the Lord and have faith in him and in the answers that he give you. So if the Lord give you, an, you know, give you an answer, believe in that answer. I mean, sometimes God told me no, and I said, man, I sure really want to go do this, but he told me no. So since he told me no, I, I can't move. I can't do anything. I'm not going to go outside of the Lord's will. That is having faith in God. Okay? It don't have to be big things. You know, that's mostly when people start trying to have faith in God when they get sick. You know, they're sick and the doctors say these things are bad and this going on. 
So we call up everybody, oh God, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. You know, you may have cancer or whatever it might be, whatever it might be. You call up everybody, say, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. But you didn't go ask the Lord. <laughs> you did not ask the Lord. So you can ask the Lord, okay, if you're sick, say, Lord, especially if it's cancer, say, Lord, is this cancer unto death? Am I coming to see you? Right? If he say yes, then why fight it? Because you're going to see the Lord. But if he say no, <clears throat> no it's not. Okay, now it's time to fight it. Now it's time to talk to God. Okay, what shall I do, Lord? Shall I take the chemo? Shall I not take the chemo? Lord, are you going to heal me uh, without me taking all that medication? You know, that is, that's when you start seeking the Lord in these situations. You know, and I'm going to tell you, it's easier to hear God and communicate with God if you're always talking to him. <laughs> so if you're always communicating with God, you know, you ain't, it's like you ain't got to go do all this preparation and everything, you know, because you're always talking to him, so he's all, he'll talk right back to you, you know. So that's why it's good to spend time with the Lord, and spending time with the Lord will help you to build your faith. Praise the Lord. I tell you, God is a good God, and we just talked about, you know, faith and being faithful to God. And uh, I'm going to tell you, you just got to spend time with the Lord. He will answer you. He, he will answer you. He will answer you. But you got, you, don't be so instant. God is not like a, a telephone call. You're like, hey, hey, God. No, you got to wait on the Lord. You know, especially if you're dealing with other people. If you're praying about other people, Lord, about this person, you're going to need to take some time and wait. Because whatever it is, God's got to deal with them about that situation, Okay. And it, then it's whether it's their choice or not. Because God ain't going to make nobody do nothing. So it's whether it's their choice or not. So that would take a little more time. Amen. Amen. Praise Lord. But I just wanted to encourage you today to, to have faith in God. Okay. Have faith. Have faith. Spend time with God. Talk to God. And wait on his answer. And whatever the answer is, do it. Don't do opposite of it because you're stepping out of God's will. Just do what the Lord tells you to do and everything will be all right. All right? Well, praise the Lord. Well, let me pray with you again. Father, I thank you for every soul <clears throat> that hears this message. Lord, I ask that you would bless them. Increase their faith, oh God. Help them to believe you. Help them to seek your face, oh God, for the answers, Lord. And not to go jump and do things themselves, oh God. But you say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, Lord, and then these things shall be added unto us. So we should seek you first before we do anything. Help them, O oh Lord, to seek you, Lord. Help them, Lord, <clears throat> to hear your voice, to know your voice, Lord. Help them, Lord, to believe and help them to trust in you, O oh God, and not believe in themselves so much, Lord, because you do not make mistakes. Lord, touch them and keep them and bless them. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you the next time.